for Cobra Kai! All right, well, I'm going to bring out our moderator. She is the star of a stand-up comedy show. She's very funny. You can see her tonight at 25.02 at 7.30 p.m. Let's welcome our moderator, Lisa Correo! Hi, everybody. Thank you, Scott. How's everybody doing? We are so excited about our Cobra Kai Q&A. You guys, we have a microphone set up on the floor right here. If you have a question, we're going to line up about 10 people at a time. We have our wonderful crew on the ground here who will uh, moderate that. But about 10 people ask only one question. Don't overly take advantage of your microphone time, please. Just one question at a time. And with that, are you guys ready? Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Martin Cove and William Zapka. Yeah. Everybody. No mercy, everyone. Yes. Get cozy. All right. Wow, it's like the Tonight Show. Look at this. This is so comfortable. I don't want to fall asleep. How you guys all doing? Well, welcome. So we're doing a Q and A. So I. Uh, the audience, if you guys have uh, cues, they're going to have A's for you. So um, you can go ahead and don't be shy. Go ahead. Yeah, there you go. All right. Welcome to my living room, gentlemen. Good to be here. I like nice. what you've done with the place. It's very nice. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hi. What's your name? Stevie. Hey, Stevie. Um, my question is, which did you prefer? Doing um, Karate Kid or Cobra Kai? Good, really. Good question, <laughs> Stevie, <laughs> rock star. Um, well, wow, it's 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 apples and oranges. Uh, Karate Kid was my first film. I was 18 years old, uh, just going to college, studying to be a film uh, a filmmaker, uh, and went on a couple auditions, and and one of them was Karate Kid, and I got it. So that was a just, you know, having something happen at the first year of life like that was super exciting. So that's when I learned my martial arts. It's when the whole thing started. So I'm, I'm really, you know, my heart's there. Uh, but Cobra Kai is a whole new, a new fun adventure. It's really part two. It's, I would say, similar, same, different, but same, you know, like uh, the episode of uh, Cobra Kai with uh, Daniel and I, different but same. So uh, it's hard to pick. It would be like picking between your kids. Uh, some people might have a choice in that. I don't. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but I'm loving, we're loving Cobra Kai because, you know, a movie's a movie, it's, you know, you shoot for three months, it's done and it's sealed. You know, this is um, really where we're doing seasons, every season is like a five hour film. You know, it's diced up into ten par half hour parts, so we're making, you know, kind of big films, you know, each season. That's, that, that's kind of our, our style, so. Um, great question, um, I hope I answered it somewhat well. So I, I'm curious now, were you saying that you started taking martial arts after you booked the role? Yeah, I didn't know any karate. <laughs> I didn't know karate. I never thought I would, I really didn't think I would get the part. Um, when I read the script, he was a motorcycle gang leader, he was a karate black belt. So I really took myself out of the equation, you know, thinking, well, you know. Um, yeah, but so I, I learned everything for the film. They trained us. Uh, Have you ridden a motorcycle before that? No, I, it was my first time on a motorcycle. <laughs> yeah. First time with a black headband, yeah. <laughs> All the new things, you know. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Okay, hi. Hi. Hey. Uh, my name is Jenna, and what, oh sorry, uh, my favorite, my question is, what was your favorite season out of Cobra Kai? Well, I think, <clears throat> uh, my favorite season was, it's a tough one because the entrance in season one, episode 10, with Billy and then the fight we had, it was, I just really enjoyed, the entrance I just really enjoyed. So because I was coming in to the show, but I, I kind of like, season three was very full and that big fight through the window and 
you know, with Ralph and with Billy, and it was just a culmination of so much, you know, a culmination of so many problems between the three of us, and uh, it was very rich. And the writers write so well, you know, they, they write the characters just in multifaceted, which is the difference between us doing the movie, which we were white hats and black hats, you know, Johnny and I with, Billy and I with the, you know, black hats and, and Ralph and, and Miyagi with the white hats. So the show is, is really exciting because you get a chance to play some vulnerability and a lot of texture more than if you were doing a movie, you know, which we kind of did. The movie was just dark and light now there's all kinds of texture, you know. But I would say season three was very exciting for me. I haven't seen the show yet, so I don't know. <laughs> Is it good? No. I heard it's good. Yeah, I, 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 it's like, again, picking a kid. I love season one because um, it was the beginning. It was raw. Um, it was the first time coming out of the gate. That was a great, fun experience to do that. Um, season two, I love the, the fight with Marty. I love the stuff where he kind of misleads me. I go and visit him at the uh, military home, and there's compassion. I love the love, the love uh, dysfunctional relationship that we have as these characters that have stuck with us from '83 till now. And uh, you know, it's really uh, kind of a love-hate, two alphas kind of um, bumping heads, and we both see things our way, and we both think thing, we're the, seeing things the right way. Um, and everything we do is with good-hearted intentions, even though those two points of view collide. So I love working with Marty and playing all those different levels. Uh, season three, I think, was like you said, I think it's really colorful. I love the, the arc that I had from being drunk at a bar, um, to fixing Miguel, to bumping into Ali, and to the final fight with, uh, with this guy, and then Daniel coming and saving the day, and then the bow at the end, I think was a great climax. So um, it's hard to pick something. I mean, it, the whole thing is, is such a great ride, and to me it all strings together, so it's more like what kind of moments are my favorite, and uh, uh, they're all great for me. They're all fun. Good question. Um, hi, my name's Lily. I'm, I was just wondering, what's your favorite like moment while filming, like your favorite scene? Favorite scene? Well, I, love, I love working also with Ralph and, and, and the Johnny Daniel. Uh, rivalry and the butting of heads uh, so I like I like I like doing the, some of the driving scenes with Daniel um, those are my fun Ario speed wagon and the nuts and all that <laughs> those are those are tops um, fighting him you know these guys are two guys that you know are, are different but same they really have they're so similar in so many ways but they just have completely different programs downloaded into them you got Daniel with the Miyagi and the balance and then you got Johnny with this you know, what are we gonna do? <laughs> this, this, yeah, this, guy, this, this influence in your life. If you got a crease in your life, you don't have much of a shot out there, kid. So pick your mentor wisely. <laughs> I, I personally love the scene I, we had in the men's shelter where he follows me and we really, you know, break bread together emotionally. And it was just terrific. And that's when. You know, both of us kind of wailed, in, you know, emotionally in, in our eyes. And I remember what happened to me. And, you know, it was just very touching to be given another chance. And that's the kind of scenes I really like to do, much more than the tough guy stuff. You know, I think the tough guy stuff comes because there is a part of me that's dark, you know. But the real lively, love, vulnerable stuff is when we play, and you know that John Kreese feels that he is that you know Johnny Lawrence is the son he never had. So it's that kind of appeal and reference that I enjoy playing as an actor more than just you know the tough guy. Even though the tough guy stuff is it's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> you do it so well. <laughs> All right, thank you. Good question. I heard that well. <laughs> I'm a big fan of How I Met Your Mother. I would love to know how you were approached on playing a clown for your first time on that show. And are we going to see Neil Patrick Harris on Cobra Kai? 
Um, I would love to see Neil in the show. He's, he's fantastic. Um, did you ask what my approach was to playing the clown? How were you approached? To oh, how was I approached to playing the clown? <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, uh, I, got a, I got a call uh, that How I Met Your Mother was interested in me doing a guest spot. Where was I interested? Uh, without seeing it, I said, sign me up. I'm in. I love that show. Uh, then they sent me the script, and I turned the pages, and there's a clown, and there's a clown, and then there's Ralph Macchio. And there's a clown and a clown and Ralph Macho and a clown and Ralph Macho and at the very end the clown takes his makeup off and it's me. Uh, so I thought, well that's a safe way to bring me back on television. Don't give me any lines. Uh, cover me in <laughs> white makeup and a, a wig and a rubber nose, you know. Uh, so uh, that's how they approached me and then the funny thing was, that actually how I approached it, I thought, wow, if I'm going to play a clown, I, I want to be a really good clown. So I went to... Uh, I looked on YouTube and I found like Wrigley Brothers Clown School. And uh, I, have you ever seen that? Okay, so I actually like did this clown school. I was in my office doing like all that, you know, and the stuff. I learned all this stuff. So when I came to this set, um, I, I actually w was like a mime and a clown and it was so much fun. Um, and then the very ending, I don't know who saw How I Met Your Mother. Do you guys all see that? Okay. Um, that, that one scene at the end when I take my makeup off. So you're working with these guys on, on a show like that and it's just this fast. And you know that was in its eighth season, so it was a well-oiled machine. The thing's moving really quick. Everybody knows what they're doing, and you're a guest. You're the new guy. And all of a sudden, at the very end, I have to take off my makeup and walk towards Barney and do this big monologue. And um, it was right before lunch, so we had maybe 10 minutes to get the shot. I had to do it one time. If I messed up, they'd have to do my makeup, and I would have thrown the whole day off. On top of that, the director, who is great, this lady named Pam Fryman, who directed almost every single episode, um, she said, okay, so Billy, this what you gotta do is you gotta step forward, go like this, do a line. Then you gotta do this, then you gotta do this, you gotta take your foot off, then the jacket. It was like 10 different physical things I had to do to get the gi off. And, um, and then they said action. And I had no rehearsal with all that stuff, so now I have to do it. And um, it worked. That was the one take you see on TV. That was the one and only take. And, um, and it was fantastic. It was so great at the end. I think Neil was really like going, yeah, when he said like, William's at, like I nailed my lines, I think is what he was saying. You know, <laughs> you did it, you know. And then they brought me back for season nine, which was awesome. Anyway, that was great. I, I owe a lot to How I Met Your Mother because I, I you know, they called me out of the blue and um, put me on a, I don't know, a hit television show as myself, which got me to do some comedy and people got to see me like that. And uh, it was a real good shot in the arm for my career and, and working with those guys who are all the best. I mean, Kobe. Uh, Jason Siegel and all those guys were just incredible. So, yeah. So well, there's a long, you. long answer to a very simple, short question. <laughs> I believe that's the reason Cobra Kai is so highly recognized now, too. So, yeah. Props to Barney Stinson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's up, Martin and William? I'm Josh. How you doing? Welcome to Kansas City. Thank you. Okay, so guys, there's, uh, there's no fear behind this question that I'm going to ask you. Obviously, season four, the hype is, is beyond real. We saw the very familiar silhouette of one Terry Silver has set the internet on fire. Guys, I'm curious. When it comes to season four, will Terry Silver be coming alone? And what do you think about the possible addition of Mike Barnes? Well, I'm glad you asked that question, because that's why we're here today, is to give all the spoilers for season four. <laughs> yes! <laughs> But it can't leave this room, all right? Oh, man. It's all right. We all know nobody's leave. taping this and everything, so we're safe, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Great question, though. I know it's exciting. Dear, dear, Terry Silver's definitely back. Can't tell you any more than that. It will not disappoint, but it will surprise you. These writers write way ahead of us, even. We think we know what's coming next. And even when we turn the pages, we're surprised. So everybody's trying to figure it out, put the puzzle together, it never happened. We can't do it, we're playing the characters. So you're in for a good show. They're gonna leak out the trailers as they come and, uh, and, and uh, be done the right timing. So. It's big, it's, it's like the 10 commandments. <laughs> it's big. And you're going to see. It's like the 10 commandments. <laughs> like, it's like bigger. Cobra Kai and Ben Hur together. It's like Raiders of the Lost Ark meets Ghostbuster. Yes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Seth. And I was wondering what is your favorite choreography slash 
fight scene kind of thing. Uh, the year's favorite. Yes. Uh huh. Good question. Marty, you want to take it? Yeah. The, I think my favorite choreography was working, fighting Billy in that at the end of uh, season three and then fighting Ralph, which I found, I, you know, of all the heroic things to do, to Ralph, I was at that point of ch choking Billy and Ralph saves Billy's life. And then we go at it, you know, and then I lift him up and plow through the window, which of course was a stuntman. And Billy wanted to do it for me. <laughs> but no, you asked them to do it, me to do it for you. I, you know, I, I, I couldn't let him hurt himself. <laughs> but the, it was just so rich because these cats had two takes. And the first take, for some reason, the window did fall the way the camera would have liked it. So the second take was just careening through that glass. And, you know, it reminded me of Karate Kid 2 when I went through the glass myself. But this was a very big glass, and it was so rich. And the choreography let us play the moment where we're all culminating outside the window, and you all saw it. And, you know, standing in glass, and Billy looks at Ralph and wants me to die, and gives him the nod, and then I'm saved by Mary screaming no, you know, at the end. But it was just all that choreography played into the emotions of all the characters. It was so right on that that action, that fight, and then what was resolved, the winner of the, of the tournament uh, will sustain himself, you know, the dojo. And uh, it was great. That's how the writers write. They really write so that all the physical stuff plays into the emotions of every character, which is tough to do, you know. Sometimes you get to do a movie with it's just gratuitous violence, you know, but like in Rambo, you know, <laughs> a lot of violence. It wasn't really geared towards each character, but everything in Cobra Kai, all the physicality is driven by the emotions of each and every character. That's why Billy is so violent. <laughs> <laughs> Um, man, I don't know. Uh, I think what's coming, season four, is some of my favorite choreography, so you have some good fights to look forward to for sure in that. Um, uh, they're all good. You know, we have a great stunt crew, a great stunt team. These guys are really innovative. When we did Karate Kid, it was pretty much two styles. I learned Tong Soo Do, which is a Korean style. Ralph learned uh, Okinawa Te, which is a defensive soft style. And we pretty much stuck to that. So, but now, and today in martial arts in general, it's mixed, it's a little bit of everything, right? So our choreographers are bringing in different kinds of moves from different kinds of styles, so that's really been fun in every single fight to play with new things and the idea is that Johnny's picked up some things along the way, like when Kree says, I taught you everything you know, and Johnny says, not everything, and did this kind of wheel kick from the ground and kick the cigar out of his mouth. That's a, a, a new, I forgot the style that is, but that was like a different style. So we're learning stuff, new moves and new stuff too, so it's all exciting. Um, you know, I love the first, uh, in the first episode of, of season one, the fight with uh, the teenagers in the parking lot so far is my emotional favorite one. It's been the most, I think, fulfilling because that was the first time Johnny Lawrence pulled out his, his, his weapons since 1984 or five, you know. Um, so the, the, the emotional f uh, f part of that and protecting this kid kind of set the tone of who Johnny is and why he's doing it. Um, so I really enjoyed that. I love fighting with Marty in season two. We had a great fight at the beginning when, uh, you know, he comes in and, and, and we have our fight. Um, we worked really hard on that one and uh, moved really fast. I think I jammed my toe one time in his foot because I was uh, moving in on him and he didn't back up in time or I moved too quick and, you know, my toe completely jammed yeah, inside. Too quick. <laughs> yeah, those happened, by the way. We're all being, I moved too quick. You know, and uh, so my toe jammed inside and I got a stunt guy standing over there and uh, let me see you guys. And um, so, and he was ready to jump in, but we're, we want to do our own stunts because there's a difference. If you see a stunt guy doing the fight, sometimes it comes off and it looks like, you know, a video game, like some really great technical martial artist, like Street Fighter or something, which is great. But what's, what we're bringing to it, Ralph, all of us, is, is character in the martial arts because martial arts is unique to each person. So as much as possible, I want to do it, even if it's a little slop, this and that, it's all on purpose. You know, I jammed my toe, went, hobbled over to the side, 
and literally yanked my toe out and didn't tell anybody. But I mean, the, sh the, the, the electricity that went up my leg, if you ever had that happen, was not fun. But um, yeah, we, we do that. We get very physical. We're every, every fight that we're doing, we're- Do you get injured fight. a lot? Because they are very physical goals. Yeah, they, I mean, we don't, not injured, injured, but like for instance, the fights with, with Daniel, with me and Ralph in, our, in my apartment, where I kick him into the TV, um, that fight was a lot bigger than we, they cut together at the end. But, um, you know, he's got really good blocks. Like Ralph, in, in real life, he's, he's been doing that since 1983. <laughs> you know? He's got these great, like, pop weapons, and his, his arms are like, they're like a baseball bat. So every time I go to do a punch, it's like, bam, it's like, dude, chill. Boom, damn, dude, chill. So by the end of the day, my, <laughs> I'm like, literally, we have pictures, and we haven't posted them yet, but both of our arms from here to here is just bruises. Oh, wow. And it literally feels like you just took your arm and slammed it against a pole because we shoot this stuff over and over and over. So yeah, it's very physical. We move very fast. In Karate Kid, we didn't have any of that because we had so much time to practice. We had five days a week, four hours a day, learning those fights exactly, specifically. And we never really, except one time, had one little slip up at the fence fight where I round kicked Ralph in the face. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> got over it. But uh, you know, but we never got close because when we did Karate Kid, we had pads on to start and he would be back two or three feet for me and I'd be back two or three feet for him. And we would use pads and then we would get closer and closer and closer until the pads were literally barely grazing each other. And then after weeks, months, then we would take the pads off. So literally all that stuff, we never had one accident in any of that fighting. On this show, we're more prone to having clashes because it moves so fast. We learn these fights sometimes the same day and we have to shoot them at such a high rate of speed. So it's very physical. Everybody's getting a little bit of a ding, but it's fun. It's cool. It feeds us. And you're a little bit older from the movie. No, so I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit. You guys are in great. A little bit. Hey, listen, we're doing our back. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's awesome. Yeah. Hey. Thank you. Good question. Um, <laughs> hi, I'm Chloe. And my question would definitely be, what is your favorite line in the movies and the TV show? So, like, overall favorite line out of everything. To watch. Quit! <laughs> <laughs> and sweep the leg. <laughs> that was for you, Chloe. <laughs> I think, I think, when I first meet you, the real story's only just begun. I just love that line, you know, I say it in my sleep, I say, you know, I say it to my girlfriend. That's his answering machine. I just leave a message. saying it. <laughs> you know, I say it, yeah, I say it to my kids, you know. But I think that's the best, my favorite line from the, um, from the show. You know, favorite line is it's really you know no mercy or when I wipe your nose I mean when I wipe your nose and that and we, it just the look I think I said uh, uh, sweep the leg you have a problem with that it just the rich part which is an actor it, a lot of great words are said between lines you know and when you read a script and the, the emotions between the dialogue between the lines often is so rich when it when the scene is so right and that seems so right that when we and god knows we've seen it so many times and you know in trailers and but when i wipe your nose and i said you have a problem with that <laughs> there it is what you do look at he looks at you like that you know you have to say no sensei you know it's just it's just terrific you know and finish him i like that finish him which we did the, the director, John Avelson, we did it in the soundstage while we were just looping. And finish him was said originally quietly, you know, finish him. And then John said, no, blurt it out. And a lot of people like that line too, you know, finish him. You know, it was like, I say it in my sleep again. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the dialogue I like. Just a lot, thank you. Good question. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Dylan, and my question is, uh, what was your initial reaction to Cobra Kai uh, coming back for like season one? 
Well, we were all surprised to see the trailer. <laughs> they did it. We couldn't believe it. They, they approached us. So for me, they approached me uh, before Ralph, I think, um, when they were coming up with the story, the three creators of the show, took me to a restaurant and uh, said, we have an idea for a movie. Uh, I knew these guys because I worked with one of the writers on Hot Tub Time Machine and the other two uh, created Harold and Kumar and I, was, I knew them and I always felt like we'd be working together someday. Didn't know on what. They emailed me and said, hey, we have an idea for a project. Um, let's go get some lunch. And so I thought, okay, maybe Harold and Kumar 5 or something or Hot Tub 4 or something like that. And, uh, and they said, okay, Karate Kid, Cobra Kai, Johnny Lawrence. And I, yeah. So they, they, pitched him, oh, they pitched season one to me uh, in its entirety over a, a bowl of chips and my head was spinning. And uh, I couldn't, and I, and I said, okay, what's the tone of this? Is it funny? Is it serious? Is it heartfelt? It's all those things. Um, one way they sold it to me was uh, they said, if there was no such thing as Karate Kid, we could call this Bad Santa. I mean, Bad Sensei, like Bad Santa, and you would be the Bad set, uh, Sensei. And I, then I got where they were going with it. So uh, it was tentative at first. I was, you know, this is a long time ago we did Karate Kid, so to come back with an idea like this was very big, and, um, you know, to, to get myself too invested in it. Um, would have been hard if it didn't work out. So I held it lightly, Ralph held it lightly, and then we went out and developed it, pitched it. And um, so it was exciting though, the whole time. I mean, I felt like when, when we finished that lunch, I felt like um, literally like the character of Johnny Lawrence like opened a crusty eye, you know, and, <laughs> I could say, and held up a bottle of beer and I'm like, here he is. So, uh, <laughs> so like that was it. But we, we, were, we were really careful, all of us going into this to do something that was relevant for today, that was going to be on the point. Because if this thing failed, if it was, it, it could have been just a, it could have been a, a, a total train wreck. So we were all very careful, cautious about that. And the writers have a lot, they're the super fans of Karate Kid. And, you can uh, tell that they're super fans. Super fans, yeah. And, and as a fan of the show, also, I know when I first heard about it, I don't know if you guys agree with this, but when I first heard about it, I was like, oh no, please don't mess this up. You know what I mean? Like. Because anytime there's a beloved movie from your childhood and they try to redo it in some way, it's usually bad and this is so good. Yeah. 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 Definitely a lot of risk involved. I think everybody watched the trailer and like, oh, this is going to be either good or really bad and so far so good. Yeah. Oh, man. Good so question, good. buddy. Thanks. <laughs> Hey, what's up? Uh, my question is for William. Uh, I've been waiting 20 years to ask you this question because about 20 years ago, I had the wackiest William Zabka encounter that I've been telling people about for decades. Uh -oh. It's become an urban legend at this point. Okay. I know there are about 20 witnesses to this. Okay. I was there, you were there. You want to know if it's, it was really me, right? You want to know if it was really you and okay, get let's the, hear it. your side. This is going to be good, guys. All right. <laughs> So 20 years ago, I'm standing in line outside the Directors Guild, Sunset Boulevard, for a film festival screen. There were probably about 20 or 30 other people in line. We were there about an hour. There's an open little courtyard in front that, that was empty, so it was just the people in line. A car pulls up, you get out of the car, and then from out of nowhere, there were about 20 kids coming out of, jumping out of trees, coming from behind pillars. I think one kid crawled out of a manhole. They're running diagonal directions, hooting and hollering. They all plant themselves in front of you. And then in unison, they go, sweep the leg, ha, no mercy, ha. And then 10 seconds later, they, uh, they all run off in different directions and they vanish. There was no sign that these kids existed. You paused, put on some sunglasses, adjusted your suit, and walked into the building like the coolest cat in Hollywood. <laughs> now that's how I remember the story. What's your version of that story? Let's just stick with yours, man. <laughs> so th this was obviously, you know, that, uh, like a year before the term flash mob became a, a thing. Uh -huh. uh, was that? Yeah, I, I, I'm not gonna, gonna pop your bottle, dude, but that wasn't me. Uh, <laughs> I'll have a seat then. Oh, I'm sorry, on. yeah, yeah, but it sounds good. I'll, do, I'll tell you one thing that's very similar to that, and if you were a kid in a martial art camp, there's a story very similar to that, because I would go and, and, uh, and teach uh, karate camps in the summer with uh, my trainer, 
and there was about 300 kids all lined up in the field um, getting ready to do their, their, their warm-ups and I came down I have a, a CJ7 Laredo Jeep and I, I did come down in my gi and headband with a big tarp over the back of it with a bunch of karate kids in it and I came to a true story came down a hill big dark big hill in my four-wheel drive pulled up in front of everybody the tarp did come off kids jumped off and we and, and we did that so are you confusing maybe were you at that camp did you have an accident and bump your head somewhere and confuse the because <laughs> uh, that really never happened I don't know I mean that's pretty elaborate manholes the whole thing I mean it sounds like a great dream and sometimes dreams feel very real <laughs> Well, at this point, guys, I mean, you definitely are iconic, and I'm guessing that you're getting recognized everywhere now. Are you having weird encounters with fans? Um, it's a little more now. Right, Marty? I mean, it's you know, very, I mean, I, it's yeah. very strange. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No, I mean, it's just, you know, it's just more. It's like, you know, it's just a different... Netflix is a big platform, you know, and even if you don't want to see the show, you're watching the, the trailer, you know, it's in your face, so... It's good, though, you know, that's what we do. We're here to entertain, you know. Not only here to entertain, by the way. Mostly, yeah, so it's fine. No weird, no weird encounters, just nice people, you know. Yeah, I think that we, we really appreciate, you know. We've been living in, in the Karate Kid world for years, going to autograph shows and all, but the attention now is so, it's so rich, and so many people have been made happy by the show being you know, it's really rich in the sense of kids love it because they go tell their parents about the show. And then the parents tell the kids about the movies. So they, it goes back and forth. And it's such an education. Um, and I, I think the success of the show is based on what we haven't had in a long time. A wonderful show like the Ed Sullivan Show, where everybody in the family can get around the TV and watch Cobra Kai and get something from it. So I feel really good about what we're giving to everybody because it's it's great. You know, kids identify with it. You know, I've I've been in places where there's a six year old who comes and asks for an autograph or a picture, and two hours later I'm in a cigar lounge in Ybor City in Tampa. And there's a sixty seven year old couple from Brooklyn coming up to me and saying, you know, we watch the show diligently. We're, we're from Brooklyn and uh, we live here in Florida. Can we take a picture? So when the cross section is that big, from a six year old to a 67 year old, you know, you know you're in Billy Zapka show. <laughs> <laughs> and you know you can be happy that you're part of the show. Mr. Ko, Mr. Zabka, thank you for being here today. Uh, this question relates mostly to Cobra Kai, but you may certainly be able to speak to the Karate Kid. Uh, in filming, do you tend to stick very strictly to what is written in the script, or as actors, do you get to bring your own ideas, improvising lines, uh, the way something should be read or portrayed? It it's a mix because you know I think Marty never learns his lines. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Everything you see is from him. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I've I've always rewritten lines in movies and things, and then only recently I stopped doing that, and I did it because I guess it was easier to learn if I th changed the word here and there. And Billy and I have a, had a problem with a scene. Um, just right before the, the, the end of, of season four. And um, we re rewrote the scene over the weekend, sent it to the writers, and the writers, you know, they gave us credit. Yes, it's good, your writing is good, but let's just keep it the same. <laughs> yeah. and, 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 sure. and we really tried to make this scene, both of us had a problem with the scene. And um, it was coming out of, out of episode 10, and you know, season four, and, I had the hardest time, and we you know, ultimately it worked, I guess. But I stopped doing that with these writers because they're really good. But whenever we do have a problem, we can take it to them, and sometimes they'll say, "Okay, do it your way," and 
you know, you'll, you'll change a word here and there. But by and large, their writing is good, which is why everybody likes the show. Yeah. It's really good writing. And, you know, I've been, we've all been part of movies that were dreadfully written. And God knows you wonder why they ever got made, you know. Um, and then there are movies like Rambo, who Sly has nine lines. I have more lines than he does, but it's nonstop action. You know, and, and pictures work for that reason too. So, you know, I, I, I try not to rewrite much in Cobra Kai, and they give me these big speeches, and I'm pontificating a lot, you know, but it's, it's written well. And if I can learn the lines easily, easily that means it's written well. When, when you have a tough time learning a line, usually it's poorly constructed. Go ahead. Yeah, that's, a, that's a good note. I mean, you know, our job is, first of all, you're an actor, so you're not saying things, the, like your character isn't saying things the way you would say it. So you may read a, a line and go, ah, it'd be better to say it this way. It comes off my tongue better this way. Um, it's the same meaning, but I want to do it this way. But that's, that's the default. That's actually, that's a cop-out. That's a crutch. What really you're supposed to do is you're supposed to go and... and get the muscle memory on your tongue for the way that this line is written. Because usually by the time it gets to you, it's gone through the writer's room, it's gone through studio notes, it's gone through network notes, it's gone through all the producers, all the writers, and now you have it. So if you think you're gonna come here and fix everything. So before first, you gotta, you gotta do it and serve it that way. Um, if, there's a, if there's an intention or if there's a, for me, it's not a word, it's more of an idea and, and how that idea connects to, like I don't, I don't think Johnny would do this. I think Johnny, that's too much for that. No, then we'll redo the whole thing. But as far as the words go, it's pretty much important, at least to get to get it nailed the way it was written, and then then play with it. Um, as far as improvising, yeah, uh, once once you're in the pocket and you're nailing it, then they're like, just go with it. And then you can have a lot of fun and do that. You know, um, Paul Walter Hauser, who plays Stingray, is great with that. Like, remember him in the uh, Home Depot, and he's like, aren't you? Yeah, you know, that guy's so funny, and, and he's so quick. So he just riffed a whole bunch of different things, like, when were the 80s when this happened and that happened? Um, you know, as, a, as an actor, your job is to say the text, and, and sometimes that, and that's the work. It's not comfortable sometimes to say things. Sometimes you don't even want to say them because you're like, ah, that hurts to say it. Like, Johnny wouldn't say that, you know, it's uncomfortable. But that's, that's the job, and that's what's great. So, you know, for me and Marty, all of us were, I mean, like, I died of Billy. Billy's gone. When I play Johnny Lawrence, like, I, I have to wake up three months later and kind of, find me again because I will go right into this guy and um, and and trust the words and trust the actors you know so for me that's the journey is that's that's the work as an actor it's like I want to do it my way I want to do it this way but they have it constructed a certain way you know, I owe it to serve that first but, yeah, so. but then you know and then there's movies you do like Marty said I did a movie one time in Bulgaria it was the biggest POS aspect <laughs> and uh, I literally, I got there, no joke, and, uh, and I got the script, I won't say what movie it was, but I got this, I got there and I said to the producer, I said, this is the worst script I've ever read, he goes, I said, can I make some tweaks, he says, go have at it, so I sat in the production office and rewrote the whole thing, <laughs> and they shot it, yeah. Yeah. so they didn't care, they just wanted to make their movie, but it's something like this, you know, Karate Kid, this kind of caliber, you know, it's been vetted. How I Met Your Mother, like you don't mess with a word. Like if I came on How I Met Your Mother and said, I have an idea, like there's like an army of like, I mean, uh, when you do a table read for How I Met Your Mother, they got a big table and there's Neil, there's the whole cast, the director, all the producers, the network. I mean, you're surrounded in a room and it's like a stadium and you're surrounded and you're at a table. And if you decide you want to like, you know, you never have an idea. Right. So I learned on that show, like, I'm not going to say, I'm, not, I'm just going to say what they write and they know what they're doing, you know. Um, maybe when you're the star of the show, then you can play around there, like we do now. You know, we're networking. It's really funny because I did the Goldberg, same thing, and you don't mess with a well-oiled machine, you know. And um, God, you know, how many times we we had this discussion the first time you did uh, How I Met Your Mother, and you know, Billy had the same thing I did. We walk into a set, we have a reputation, we can fix this. I'm pretty good fixing the script. He writes, so he knows what he's doing. But you can't go in there when you're dealing with people who just know what they're doing. And you never really know that until down the line. You know, our writers know what they're doing. How I Met Your Mother, the 
writers know what they're doing. They look at you like, you want to change something? <laughs> yeah, you know, sweep the leg. <laughs> you, know? you know, it's like, and, 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 you know, you basically just shut up and you just do what you're told and it usually works out better. Uh, it, it does. Even with the flashbacks and stuff you saw in Vietnam, I had a whole list when I went to see them for season two and I wanted to, I met with mercenaries, I met with army rangers, I worked, met with all these people to discuss the flashbacks. And these guys are so astute. We sat in a hotel in, Be in a re restaurant in Beverly Hills and they said, we did that already. We've made that note. We have it all set up. It'll be in season three. Blah, 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 blah. And when you're dealing with characters who create your show with that astute, all you can do is shut up and say their words. <laughs> Man, I'm gonna look for that Bulgarian movie. I gotta tell you. <laughs> I'll tell you what it is later. <laughs> Uh, I, I hate to say it, but uh, man, we, we could do, yeah, we'll close on one last thing. Is there anything that you want to plug before we get to our final question? Should we follow you on Twitter, Instagram? I follow you on Instagram. No. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> okay. Okay, our last question. I mean, I'm there if you want to follow, that's fine. We don't know where I'm going, going, though, so don't follow me. We appreciate all of you for coming out today. Thanks. Oh, thank you guys very much. Come to our table and get some pictures and laugh. Laugh with us. So our final question. One last question. If you guys weren't acting, what would you guys be doing? <laughs> ah, that's an easy one. I've always wanted to be a time traveler. <laughs> Go back to the days of the Alamo back to the days of Rome, of, you know, Old West. I would love, but always to have the option, and I thought about this as a kid all the time, always to have the option to return if I didn't like it, you know? <laughs> so, th but that was real for me until I found out you, there was no such, there was no such profession as a time traveler. <laughs> then that's when I shaded into acting. More of a hobby. Yeah. <laughs> I would be, uh, if I wasn't acting, I would be, I would, st well, here's the funny thing, like, uh, you're, you know, just, you're not an actor if you're a working actor, I guess you think, because I was always an actor, I was always, so I'd always be an actor, you know, even if I wasn't in something, I'd be a care. I'd be doing funny stuff somewhere, um, but I would be, um, I would be trying to be a professional actor. That's what I'd be doing. If I wasn't already a professional actor, I would try, I'd be trying to, until I, maybe I'd never make it, but I'd keep trying. And then, uh, but I'd also be a filmmaker because I was going to film school. I'd, I'd, I'd write and direct and produce. Um, so anything creative behind the lens. I also play guitar. Um, and uh, yeah, I had, a, you know, wanted to do some guitar in my life, but not in a band, you know, like studio stuff. Um, yeah, but to, you know, my dad always told me a secret. He said, you know, find something you love to do and, and try to make a living at it and you'll never work a day in your life. So do something that fulfills you, you know, find something that makes you feel you and, and um, you know, and then it's not so much work. It's a lot of work, but at least you're, you're liking it, you know, if you're lucky to do that. Um, so if you have dreams, I encourage them. Listen, I was 17, I graduated high school, never in a million years thought I could see my life and I'd be here with you guys talking about it. It was just, I'm just a kid writing my name on math papers, you know. Um, but your dreams can happen, you know, can happen for all of us, you know, it's not where the special two up here, it's like, we're all the same, you know, you just see us on TV, and we'll see you back in the light in five minutes. Bye. Thank you. All right, Mark Tobin, William Sapka! Make sure that you visit them at their booths, and everybody. Woo! Thank you.